Hello and welcome back to Sousse. Today I'm heading to the very holy and religious city of Kairoa and I'm at the Luage station here in Sousse. Take a look how crazy it is. This is the main sort of mode of transportation that locals take between the cities here in Tunisia. You can see here, they're like little mini buses. Tunis ones here and all the different cities labeled above. You buy your tickets from the office here. This is just Seuss. Can you imagine how chaotic the one in Tunis is? <laughs> the station is pretty big and I'm looking for tickets to Kairouan. Here we are, Kairouan. Just five dinars. You've probably noticed that I'm filming this beginning part of the video on my GoPro, and that's because I don't want to draw too much attention really in this big station. There's also a police office connected to it. I don't want to risk getting stopped for a while if they see my microphone and my gimbal and all that stuff. Um, so I just wanted to quickly whip out my GoPro and show you in this beginning part of the video, my journey to the city of Kairouan from Seuss. The ticket, I've got it now, five dinars, just over one pound. And now I have to find which Luage is mine. Heading into the Luage now. You can see what it looks like. So once you're in the Luage, you may have to wait quite some time before it leaves. They generally don't go until they're completely full. As you can see, there's only one other person in here at the moment, so I don't know how long it's gonna take, but very affordable five dinars, and it's a quick one hour journey, so it shouldn't affect my time too much in the city, and I believe they run at night, so they're regular. You just have to be patient once you get inside. If you're lucky, you'll get one when it's completely full. Following that Luage journey, I've now arrived here in Kairouan, the holiest city in Tunisia and the fourth holiest city in Islam after Mecca and Medina in Saudi Arabia and Jerusalem. And what a better place to start than outside the Grand Mosque, which looks like a fortress from its exterior. You can see there are also grave or tombstones behind me there, which must be hundreds of years old along with it. I'm not so sure on the filming rules inside, so I'm going to probably have to switch back to my GoPro. So I'm now here inside the great mosque of Kairouan. Look how spectacular it is. Most of it that stands today was built by the Aglabids in the 9th century, which is the same people that built the Rebat Tower in the last video, the one I went up for the views of the Medina in Sousse. The prayer hall is just here, although non-Muslims are not allowed to enter, but I might be able to catch a glimpse of it and perhaps give you a shot or two. The entrance ticket for the mosque is 12 dinars, but that gets you into one, two, three, four, five, six different attractions here in Kairouan. So your money goes a long way. The 400 pillars that hold up the mosque 
were once again taken from Roman sites across Tunisia, like Carthage. Outside the Grand Mosque here we have a bit of everything. Beautiful old buildings with the blue colour, some rugs, traditional clothes and souvenirs. Kairouan is also famous for its carpet making and you'll see rugs like this all over the city dotted about in different shops. Nice paintings on the wall behind me there. The blue colours that you see all over Tunisia and the elaborate doorways. Classic symbol of the country. Having left the Great Mosque, I'm now heading further towards the markets, the souks and the narrow lanes of the Medina of Kairouan. Lots of blue and white as per usual. As I walk around these enchanting and very charming small lanes of the Medina, I want to explain why Kairan is so important in Islam. For what reason is it the fourth holiest city? Well, it originally comes from the word Kairan, which means military camp in Arabic before. And a general's horse actually spotted a golden goblet in the sand that went missing from Mecca many years before. And when they lifted up the golden goblet from the sand, water sprang out from its location. And they came to the conclusion that it was from the same water source as the Zemzem uh, in Mecca. And hence, this was the location for one of the holiest cities in the world for the Islamic religion. Just here you'll find the mosque of three doors dating back to 1440, the inscriptions that are iconic on its exterior. Assalamu alaikum. Yes. Wow. What a magical little city this is with the most interesting winding lanes, the blue colors brightly standing out against the perfect cloudless sky and the sun glistening off the top of buildings. It really is a beautiful autumn afternoon. I believe I've now found the market, as you can see. It's really quiet today, actually, which is a good thing, you know. You can really take your time getting pictures and appreciating everything, soaking it all in. <laughs> Pretty sure he just said fish. Or maybe it was a word in Arabic or French that I didn't understand.
Wow, look at this place. Making it fresh. Wow. Oh, it's crazy big. So this is almond. almond yeah. This is almond with food. Okay. Yeah. This is with date, date, Dates, olive, yeah. olive, Olives. olive, and date. This is with date, big pieces. Yeah. This is small pieces mm. with date. Same okay. one. We're entering the busier part of the market now. A lot more colorful. Some bread on the street here. In the late afternoon, the streets are starting to become more alive, a lot more people around, and just a general, uh, more of an exciting vibe about the place. Really enjoying exploring all the souks in the different cities here. One of the alleyways just off the main market make sure you come and check out the zawiya of sidi ali el garini <laughs> hopefully i pronounced all those things right look at this incredible courtyard here the tomb is dedicated to a holy man from 14th century kairouan you can see here there's wood colorful ceramic tiles and ornate patterns all around Great for pictures and great for looking as well. I'm going to wrap up things here for the Kairan video. <laughs> the boy running past me is completely out of breath. This is a really fascinating city and it's very quiet, not too busy apart from the market. Plenty of things to see, bursting with culture. It's definitely worth a trip if you're in Susa or Sfax, or even from Tunis, you can probably get here in just a couple of hours. So make it part of your plans, the fourth holiest city in Islam. So I'll see you on the next one. Peace.